Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to get started with KDE Neon. Now I know KDE Neon's an Ubuntu based distro and you think, oh, God, can't need a get started guide for Ubuntu, surely not. But uh, KDE Neon is a bit different to most Ubuntu based distros because it is minimal and includes, well, nothing much at all really. Uh, yes, it's very sparse. Sparse to the point that, first off, we don't even have a driver installer. You want the graphics drivers for your system? Well, you've got to go and find them. I'm going to start with opening up the terminal, which is called console in KDE. Console with a K. Yes, it's a humorous effort of theirs to name many applications with a K, starting with a K, a K in the middle, or a K at the end, like Amarok. Now that font is absolutely no good for you guys to see on the video, is it? So I'm going to edit the current profile. I could also edit this uh, centrally with the with the font settings under the KDE settings, but uh, for simplicity I'm just going to take this option here. So yes, font size, uh, so like 14. Uh, that's a bit more legible, isn't it? So I'll apply that and OK. So first off I'm going to install a package manager with sudo apt get, and yes I prefer apt get to apt because at least you do have the autocomplete option on apt get. sudo apt get install moon or synaptic. Moon is the native KDE package manager, but there is no reason you can't have both package managers on your system. Synaptic doesn't take up much space really. Okay, so that's installed. Clear the screen, control L, Nice handy shortcut if you didn't know it. Another package I'm going to install is for dealing with oversized SD cards. If this is not something you're going to deal with, then don't worry. It's more for dealing with the 128 gig upwards SD cards. That's a program called xfat-fuse. It's an extra 281 kilobytes used. <laughs> not much at all, really. So now to leave console behind, and I'm going to open up, oh, what should we have, moon? Yes, moon. So to install the graphics drivers, well, what graphics card do you have? If it's Intel or AMD, then you don't really need to do anything. The MESA graphics drivers are pre-installed. If you require the Vulkan drivers, I believe that's the correct package for the MESA Vulkan drivers. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't have an AMD GPU, so I can't test this out. Yeah, I believe you install the MESA Vulkan drivers. But if you have an NVIDIA based system... Why is the search not working tonight? You know, I'm going to go for Snaptic. So the drivers for NVIDIA start NVIDIA hyphen and a number. So highest version here, NVIDIA 367. You can install that. And that's what bring in all the extra dependencies for the NVIDIA graphics drivers. You can see the NVIDIA settings there. If you would like newer drivers for your system, well, I've dug up a few repositories here which you can add. So there's the proprietary GPU drivers, and that will bring in the NVIDIA graphics drivers as well as the Bumblebee drivers. Or if you want the newer MESA drivers, well, I've found a couple of these, so I'm not sure which is the best one here, but both seem to be updated all the time here. So we've got the Padoka PPA and the Oibaf PPA. I'll leave links to these in the video description, but the actual instructions on how to install the drivers are included within the repository. So, so it's sudo add apt repository, the respective name of it, then update. And I can see that it does have the Xenial drivers here because it's based on Ubuntu long-term support. You'll need the Xenial drivers. Okay, I'm sure I've gone on long enough here with just how to install drivers. So the next question is what you really want on this system. One package I will suggest you install is a dictionary because those don't come pre-installed by default. That is the Hun spell and then you just select your respective language off the list. So mine will be Hunspell ENGB. Ah, there it is. Apply that. OK. Now if you want something like LibreOffice, it is literally LibreOffice. That's a meta package, so you can install that. Yep, mark all that lot. Uh, that's going to be quite a lot of dependencies to drag in, isn't it? 
It's entirely up to you what applications you would like to install on your system now. A good way of browsing around is with the Discover package. So that's Discover, yeah, Software Center. Gives you a bit of an idea of what the applications are. So in the application type, got categories here. We already have a browser on here with Firefox. We can install other browsers. Under graphics, that is Inkscape or GIMP. In terms of just an image viewer, I actually quite like the pre-installed Gwen view. It can do a few little tweaks to the image, like cropping, rotating, as well as mirror flip and red eye reduction. So it's very useful. For a music player, I quite like Clementine. And that is a cute application, so that won't drag in too many extra dependencies. Some proprietary audio codecs might be nice as well. Now the default option would be to install the Kubuntu restricted extras, and that would be the closest option for a KDE based distro. But I don't like that option because it installs Adobe Flash Player, and that has to be one of the worst things you can put on your computer in terms of detrimenting its security. A while back I wrote this script to install restricted extras without the Adobe Flash, and it's been expanded a little bit towards, uh, I think it covers Arch now as well, although I've not tried Arch Linux, but I accepted a commit that someone wrote for installing it on Arch. Anyway, I'll leave a link to the page, there's only two commands that you need, so it's wget to download the script file and then do sudo bash flashless.sh. So would I like to install the Microsoft TrueType fonts? No. That's it. It gets on and does the job. Let me just scroll up a moment. There's a right installing restricted extras for KDE based system. Under the settings, there's quite a lot of tweaks you can do to the desktop, including changing the themes, the default light and dark theme, changing the behaviors, the styling. Yeah, there's loads here. I'm not going to go into all this. Uh, KDE Connect, you might find that useful if you've got an Android phone. I'm going to leave it there really because. It's minimal distro, you can do what you want with it, but that's like how to get started with just installing package managers and how to get the graphics drivers on your system. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.